Hello and welcome to Connect MKE. I'm your host, Denise Calloway. Coming up, we're going to learn about a program that helps individuals thrive by taking a comprehensive approach to employment and establishing good financial habits that put individuals and families on the road to success. First, though, we're going to talk to the chair of the Human Trafficking Task Force of Greater Milwaukee. Human trafficking continues to be a significant issue across Wisconsin, despite significant efforts to stop it. We're joined now by Dana World Patterson, chair of the Human Trafficking Task Force. Let's start with the basics. What is human trafficking? Excellent. First of all, thank you so much, Denise, for having me, you know, help to raise awareness and share what is going on in our city and state around human trafficking. It is a crime. It's considered modern day slavery, where force, fraud and coercion is used to persuade a person to provide commercial sex acts. Now, what's important about that definition is 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 if you're under 18, we don't have you don't have to prove the force, fraud, and coercion because it's unlawful for children to have sex. So that's that definition is for over 18. One of the things you just talked about is the fact that it is it's a problem. Human trafficking is a problem everywhere. I think there's a tendency for people to think that this is a problem that exists in big cities like Milwaukee, but it is an issue across Wisconsin, correct? Absolutely. Very interestingly, when we first started 15 years ago, the narrative was that this is a inner city black girl, no father poverty problem. But at that time, we also knew that this was a $32 billion industry. And whereas, so we asked the question, who's caring that this is an inner city black girl, no father poverty, I added, eating flour and water problem. And as we were beating the drum saying, not in our neighborhood, not in yours, we connected, we were at a luncheon where the attorney general, J.B. Van Hollen was there. And where some communities did not want to embrace that human trafficking was happening in their community, he said that human trafficking is occurring in all 72 counties. That is exactly what we needed at that time. We began to say, JB, uh, Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen said, well, J.B. Van Hollen said, J.B. Van Hollen said, and it just peeled back the onion that was needed for this message to move throughout the state that human trafficking is occurring all over. Not just within Milwaukee, not just the inner city black girl. Does human trafficking look different in different parts of the state? I would say that the underlying um, mechanism of human trafficking is the same. Where you are using, there's also labor, hum, labor trafficking, but it's where you're using the act of prostitution, selling your body for the exchange of sex through force, fraud, and coercion. That's human trafficking. That's human sex trafficking. And so that's going to look the same. But if you are in rural Wisconsin, the lure, the way a person is brought into the game still has similarities. But then, you know, you're going to speak to that person differently. So the lure may be different, but the game is the same. Let's talk about that lure. How do young people, because it could be young men or young women, how are they lured or brought into human trafficking, particularly as it relates to sex trafficking? This is a very important conversation that transcends all, uh, all individuals. If you're rural, if you're on a reservation, if you're 
Latina, if you're African American, if you're in a five bedroom home, part of the lure is vulnerability. And that connection of vulnerability now becomes the onus of the perpetrator to, to unlock how they can bring you in. But speaking across the state and outside of the state, number one is vulnerability. And I'll share a very important point. I was speaking with someone that was running for high office, not home a lot, and we were, he was interested in human trafficking around the state. And he said, you know what? I'm going home to talk to my daughter because she's spending a lot of time in her bedroom, on her phone, and she is easily a candidate to be lured. No one's watching. She has her phone in her hand and she's spending a lot of time in isolation. Yes, so it doesn't matter. That point of vulnerability, having someone speak into your life, it said that, um, and unfortunately, which helped me to understand how I knew that I could help in this area, I asked 15 girls in a high school, how many of them have been touched inappropriate? And unfortunately, 14 of the 15 girls raised their hand. I knew then, as they went around the circle, that point of vulnerability of being touched inappropriate was also used, you know, where a perpetrator, the pimp, can say, oh, I will treat you better than your father did, your uncle, your grandfather, your cousin, who should have been protecting you, taking care of you. Hence, we have the term daddy. You know, many women will, or girls will tattoo daddy on them. It's that pseudo connection to protection and taking care of a person in the way that, you know, a father would. What role does social media play in the recruiting of young men and young women to human trafficking? Social media continues to evolve and it has changed the game. And even to this day, I was speaking with a survivor leader who is doing research around social media and she was saying how social media is driving the game even further underground because of all the apps and the terminology and the things that are used where if you don't know, it's common, but they're using social media in plain sight for some apps. And then there are other apps where for instance, if your daughter is online and they're talking to someone, they may use a code to say like, my mother is over my shoulder, things like that. Social media is very important within the game. Uh, and I say the game, that's the term used um, within prostitution and human trafficking, being in the life, being a part of the game that's used often. You can buy and you're selling through the apps of social media. It, it really is something that is, is hiding in some ways in, in plain sight in communities Absolutely. around the state. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is hidden in plain sight. Another testimony of a woman she said, I was 15 when I was lured into the game. She said, we, he was grown dating me and no one, she said, no one, not one time ever said anything. It's hidden in plain sight. It's, it's very common. So it's important, you know, if you see something, if the hairs raise on the back of your neck, if it feels uncomfortable, it probably is. 
And that's the time to say something, to do something. I don't recommend being a vigilante, but you can call someone. You can say, hey, this seems suspicious, or this just doesn't feel right, or I'm seeing this behavior, or this car, they're picking up, you know, they're up and down the street. They're just whatever that scenario may be is necessary. And I was, um, one officer said every little piece connects to the puzzle of having the perpetrator being put away for a very long time. While this may so be- you may see a license plate. That may be a part of it. And I'll give you a very, very quick snapshot. I was going into a store and I looked up and I saw one person that looked like your traditional pimp, big hat, suit, cane, all of that, you know, from back in the day. Then there was another person walking behind that person with their head down and a person behind that woman walking, you know, in the single file with her head down, classic, right? You don't look up. And so now, and it was the dollar store. So we're in the dollar store and because I had this information that every little bit helps, I'm taking the pictures, walking, you know, trying to see what I can see. And then it just so happened that they were next to me in line, putting together their money. I was able to make contact with the Asian woman. I said, are you okay? I whispered, are you okay? And she just looked at me and put her head down. And then the other woman was behind her. Well, I knew that that could be harmful to the two women for me to step in like a vigilante. You don't do that, right? But what I was able to do was to get their license plate. That's what I could do. And I had to chuck it up as, chunk it up as that was the best that I could do at that moment while also looking at this in this woman's eye saying, I see you, are you okay? Now she could have done something different, but because she didn't, and she just looked down, I knew don't step any further. Right. So the more you know, the more you'll see. And I passed on that license plate to law enforcement. Hopefully it, it became part of another puzzle, of a puzzle, right? To right. bring someone to justice. And we had, we really had to slow it down because it's a 27 million, 27 million women and girls are counted. And this is very important, Denise, when I say counted, because we know that this is an underground system. How many more have not been counted? 15 years ago, we were talking about $32 billion worldwide. Now that number counted is $150 billion that has been counted. So this is a big industry around the world that is affecting women and girls, men and boys, our LGBT community. It is in every community. And we have it, to do more. With it being that big of a, a business, it, it does become very difficult to, to stop it because there is so much in it mm -hmm. for the people who are perpetrating the crime. I love that mindset because it is very daunting. It sucks the oxygen out of the room. However, what came to mind was one less. And we're very familiar of the boy on the seashore throwing in the starfish. And then someone coming along is like, what are you doing? You see all these starfish on the, on the beach here? And he said, you know what? it matters to that one to that one and that helped me now we're in this 15 years and i extracted from that one less one less victim in milwaukee is one less victim from the world when we take a look at some of those things that are on the horizon to begin to make um, a difference what what are some of those things that are are beginning to to happen or as part of it does the fact that there continues to be increased awareness. Education and awareness are paramount in the plight of eradicating human trafficking. 
paramount because the more you know, the more you'll see. And this is a salacious topic but we want the information to be accurate. We want individuals to share along the way accuracy so that we can really make a dent in this um, area and debilitating um, community effort of human trafficking. So I think that it's like the more people know at this point, I feel like you're living under a rock if you don't know about human trafficking. Have the conversation with your loved ones. Don't wait for it to be, or your family member, or your, your neighbor. Care. You know, just care a little bit more. Don't wait for it to come right on your doorstep to make a difference. Education and awareness is number one. Also speaking to your legislators, making sure that they understand that you care about this issue and that they should as well be doing something. We've been trying to move the safe harbor legislation, which protects our youth, um, more housing, you know, write a check. There are just so many things that we can do as a community to care about that one person. And so I really, really appreciate the opportunity to lift you know, our voice in this way. Dana, thank you so much for being here with us and sharing this information with us so we can be uh, aware and act. If you or someone you know needs help, please call 911 or text HELP to 233-733. We'll be right back.